So let's just read it. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 4 says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which are of old, men of renown. And then we just sort of step past that, and you don't hear about giants again until you get past the flood. Right? Yeah, Bill. Apparently, the, uh, before that, because Noah never rolls, uh, I'm assuming regular sized people, the giants had to come from uh, the angel, the strange man that comes from. That's my, that's my interpretation that uh, um, a, you know, angels left their habitation. If you were to go, to, you know, it, to me, it, it, it's. Um, you know, if you, you know, you compare Scripture to Scripture, right? And so they're called sons of God. Sons of God could be believers, okay? They can be that. Uh, they're also angels. Job talks about that as well. But go over to First Peter. First, go Jude. Go Jude. Pastor is actually, I've been, I was trying to watch on Facebook to see what he talked about on Wednesday. Since he's actually talking about these creatures that come out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9. All right? And, uh, but anyway, I mean, we're in Jude, but... Uh, I think these creatures are these angels that left their habitation. Because God, you know, the bottomless pit is not hell, but it's in hell or near hell. It's a place of torment. Um, it's a place of judgment. It's not a place where God created anything. You know, he didn't put, you know, he didn't create something in judgment. Judgment is something God brings because of a problem. And this, you know, and, <clears throat> and the judgment uh, is, is before the time. You know, there is a time appointed for judgment, right? And that's why the, uh, there was a demon that speaks to uh, Christ. Are you here to judge us before the time, right? And because he knows some buddies of his that were. So, but what he's asking, when he's demon-possessing that, you know, if you go back to, into the Gospels, if you know what I'm talking about, when, he, when, when that demon possesses that person, he's asking, did I cross the line? Because there were angels that crossed the line. I mean, there's God. God, even though, even though Satan is the god of this world, the prince of power of the air, there is still a line that cannot be crossed. And those angels crossed the line. It says Jude here in verse six. Jude six, and the angels which kept not their what first estate, but left their own habitation. So where do angels live? <laughs> Heavenly places, right? That's where they're at. They, they didn't keep their first, their first their estate, their, their, their dominion, their location, their region of influence. They left that. They left where they live. Okay? And wh you know, where did they go? Well, they, they came to the earth, I think. They, they chose of women all that they wanted, and they had children, and they were giants. You know, maybe not all of them were giants, but they had giants, right? He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of that great, of the great day. And then even as Sodom and Gomorrah says, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, you know, you know and, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, all right, and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of what? Eternal fire. They're already in judgment. So where do you find any judgment of any beings? You know, there's hell, right? But you see these beings in, in Revelation chapter 9 that come out of the bottomless pit, these locust-like things. By the way, this is the year, the year of the cicada, all right? 21-year cicada, so it's going to be a fun next few months. Uh, yeah, May, May or whatever, you'll be opening your mouth and a cicada will fly in. Do you remember? The last time, 17 years ago, I think it was, it wasn't too bad. But I remember, I remember the time before that. I mean, back in... I was in my 20s or whatever it was. It was, it was bad. Yeah, so last time I, I thought, that ah, wasn't bad at all. But I remember my 20s. It was pretty nasty. Uh, but good luck. You know it's going to be a good one just because, right? So uh, go over to, uh, I think it's First Peter. I'll find it for you. But uh, no, Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter 2 verse 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned. Well, all of Satan's angels have sinned, right? right? I, mean, I mean, they've all sinned, but not all of them are in judgment. But cast them down to hell and deliver them to chains of darkness be reserved unto judgment, right? There's a set of angels that have, that have crossed the line and they've been judged, right? And then, and then it's, but the interesting thing is, you, you have, I think, a timeline here. Verse 5, and spared not, what? The old world, but saved Noah the eighth person. So you have the angels that sinned and God judged them, all right? And, and then it took a while for Satan to get a couple other angels to do it. 
Now, if you, by the way, if you take a look at the context, you're pretty far after the flood. You are at the time of David, okay, when you have giants in the land, right? So you're, you're significant. I mean, we, can, we can find out. I have a timeline up here. We'll look at it in a minute. And, uh, uh, but anyways, um, and then he brought in the flood of unrighteous. And then turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff like that in the ashes. So they're talking about this judgment. Uh, anyways, but no, I think those giants are the children of angels and men. And they are, the difference between them and their daddies are they can die. Apparently you've taken on the form of man, some sort of strange corruption of that. But uh, they, they can die and they were all wiped out. Now, I don't think everybody was a giant, all right? I mean, obviously... Uh, Ham, Japheth, and Shem found wives, right? They found wives, and they, uh, they, had, uh, and they were okay, all right? But uh, so uh, it wasn't, not everything, you know, not everything was, I mean, not every person was a giant. But it says, and there were giants in the earth, right? Not everybody's a giant. Not everybody was corrupted in that fashion. But everybody was corrupted in another fashion. They were all corrupted spiritually, all right? And things had gone pretty pretty far astray. All right, so let's keep reading. Any other questions? I'm just assuming, you know, because David uh, uh, killed Goliath says he had a bunch of giants in the land. David and the other people that were there were general sizes like we are. No, uh, well, actually, David was probably about four foot ten. Okay. Well, okay. And you know, and he he and he was he was average height. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, when he was an adult. But you know, they say about the giants, you know. So, so when when Israel, it's interesting though that you know where are all the giants after the flood? They're all in the land. They're they're up and down the coast, both sides of the River Jordan. All right, and uh, that's what I showed you last time, right? And you know why are they there? Well, because God knows a promise. There's been a promise made to. David, or I mean not to David, but Abraham and Isaac and, and uh, Jacob, right, to Israel, right? The land. So he's just trying to stop a promise, right? Um, uh, you know, he's the, 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 second, the second purpose was different than the first purpose. The first purpose was to corrupt the seed, all right? That was before the flood, all right? Um, if there would have been a very a quick, immediate attack after the flood, they, that would have been a seed attack. That is, you know, you have Ham, Japheth, and Shem, and they have children, 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 right? If it had been very early in that, they'd been going after the corrupt the seed again to do the same thing, but that wasn't the case, right? Because you take, let me see if we can go here. So, and this is a, this, have you ever seen this map? Okay, I bought this one. Yeah, it's, it's, you'll see it on Facebook. Now that you saw it, if anybody's carrying some Amazon you know, device, you're going to show up, this is going to show up in your feed somewhere a little later on today. So. Okay, but this is, a, uh, this is a world history chart, but it's a Bible line. It's, called a, it's a Bible timeline, and it goes in a circle, so it's like you know, 6,000 years of history or whatever. Okay, and uh, I'll try to blow it up a little bit. Oops. But it follows the families. So here's Adam and Eve. And Adam, you know, there's, there's Abel and Cain. Abel's killed, right? Let me blow it up a little further. All right. And it just shows you how long they lived and stuff like that, timelines. And it goes sort of in a circle to try to do it all in one chart. But there's Adam and Eve, 930 years. Seth's born in year 130. This is a timeline. You know, it's, a, it's again, it's not perfect, right? It's a... It's a uh, you know, man pulling it together. So this is not scripture, but, uh, but you know, trying to do a timeline. There's Abel and Cain and things like that. <laughs> My mask. Um, but anyways, if you follow the timeline, we're not going to follow this part, but if you follow the timeline, we get over here to Noah. Oops. Am I able to get to there? Okay, and you get to Noah and... You come here, and here's the flood, as it comes around time-wise, right? And uh, you have, uh, and it's following the righteous line here. So here's Shem, there's Ham, there's Japheth, and, and what they do is they follow the. It's this time it follows the various families. So you get to see the various families of the earth and and how they populate various things. So for instance, like uh, you have the Tower of Babel from Nimrod. 
it's from Ham, Ham's family, things like that. But anyways, you, uh, to get to where like Isaac and here's Isaac, right? And we get you know, and you get to Jacob in this period of time, right? You get you know, Jacob has children. They're going to go into Egypt for a while, right? All right. So you see, where's the? Here's Moses. There's the Exodus, right? So you got to get the whole way to Saul and David down here, which is around 1100 BC, right? And the flood was when? A little further, about 2300 BC. So it's about 1200 years until you get to the time where, where David and them are at, right? Now, when David goes, kills Goliath, he's the son of a giant, right? So I don't know how long giants live, right? But, you know, they, you know, uh, but, you know, most of the giants were dead by the time they moved into land. You were dealing with the children, the offspring, right? right? But anyways, it wasn't to corrupt the seed. It was now an issue as God, you know, what is God saying? God's saying, I'm going to take, give a land, right? So what we're going to try to do is stop the promise. You know, if I can stop, if I can break, breaks, you know, if I can stop something God says, then it's not going to happen because it becomes a lie, right? God says something, he's not able to do, accomplish something. But anyways, it becomes more about stopping the promise. And so, so it's an issue of populating the land with giants. And so that's why there's a place called the Valley of Giants. They see, you know, when, when the spies go in, they see, they, see giant, not, they, they see giants, they see the sons of giants, the Anakins, and they, and they make a comment that everybody they see is big. You know, it's not just, so they're not all giants, but everybody is big. They're all, you know, bigger than their, their head, you know, they're all, they're all like Saul. You know, Saul was an amazing Jew, Hebrew, because he was a head taller than all the other Jews. He might have been maybe six foot, all right? You know, he had to, I mean, he was a giant in Israel, right? But compared to everybody else, everybody else. So when they went into the land, they saw everybody like Americans, right? You know, so it's like walk in, you know, and everybody was like in, you know, six foot. You know, kids today are like giants compared to kids. My, you know, I'm average height when I was born, all right? But I'm not average height today, you know? I mean, that's, you know, today average height is, is uh, about six foot-ish in the United States. It's, it's for, for a man. So, yeah. Yeah, so Genesis 6 says this, that there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. All right. So before and after. And the, and the after ones, there were few, far fewer. So the supernatural. Yeah, and it, was, it was, and it was a different, again, different purpose. Far fewer angels involved in it, I think, four. All right, because there's two places of judgment in the book. I mean, if, there's, if there's more than that, they were, you know, some were cast into hell or into the, bot well, the bottomless pit. But in Genesis or Revelation 9, talks about four angels that are bound under the great river Euphrates. Well, there aren't good angels. You know, I mean, you're, not, you're not binding good angels, right? And, uh, and so you, you have four angels. I think they're maybe after the flood, right? Again, uh, that's supposition. But like, where did they come from? Why are they there? They, were, they crossed the line. And when you look in Scripture, demon possession's not crossing the line. All right? I mean, it's, it's not crossing the line. It was allowed, right? Because, but they weren't, you know, they were, they, they, they were not corrupting the sea. They were doing awful stuff. You know, there's stuff that like Satan does today. It's awful stuff. But it's like, you know, crossing the line. For instance, Job, in the book of Job, Satan can't, for a child of God, you know, he can't indwell you, one, that's today, right? That's, it's crossing, that's not possible, right? God won't allow it. God had to lift protection from Job to allow Satan to touch his body physically, all right? He had to lift his protection to touch him in, really in his life, stuff going on around him, right? So, you know, uh, you know, you, so, and the reason they had to is because Job was a righteous, perfect man, and he was doing things God's way, and so he just walked God's way, and he was protected. Now, if you walk away from God, you walk into the world, you allow yourself open. So Paul says things like, um, you're taken captive by Satan at his will if you're totally allowed. So Satan can touch you, all right? We're not ignorant of his devices. We know that... Um, that, uh, you know, if, we, if we're angry we, and, and we sin, you know, we, we give Satan an advantage so he can, he can come after us. But he can't, there's a limit, though, again, to what he can do. 
right? And that's really all dispensations. Uh, that that is true so because he's one. He's a limited. He's not a. He's not God, all right. He is a created being, all right. And 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 God guards and protects his children. Doesn't mean you're not going to have any problems. Doesn't mean you're going to be rich and famous. Doesn't mean that you know. You know, all those things because we're a part of a sin cursed creation that touches every one of us. All right? So we get sick, we get ill, we, get, we die. That's just life, right? That's part of this life. It's not what was intended, it's part of the new order after Adam and Eve sinned, after Adam sinned. It's the new uh, situation. We're in the bondage of corruption, right? And, uh, and that's just, you know, where we're at. Uh, at, at this time, okay? Make sense? All right. All right, so let's, let's move on. So verse 5, okay? So uh, God said, so anyway, so um, we are uh, where we're at now. We're with Noah, and, and we're going to, we're, uh, oh, verse 3, let me, let me just review real quick. So in Genesis, um, Genesis 5, just look at Genesis 5, verse 32, just a couple of verses. It says, and Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat what? Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? Now, possibly triplets. It could be two births, right? I mean, they you know, could have a very early one. It could be all in that same year, but probably triplets, but they're very close in age, right? About the same age, right? Uh, <clears throat> that's when he's 500 years old, right? In verse 3 of chapter 6, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years, Right? So God's saying, you know what, there's a problem going on here, and, and there's some context of these giants running around, and this, there's, a, there's a spiritual conflict going on, basically of the sons of God leaving heavenly places where they're supposed to be and doing some things. But also you have corruption going on, and you know, mankind has become pretty corrupt, and uh, we're going to see that as well. And maybe it's all you know, corrupted seed, uh, or maybe because you know, it, it's been going on for some time. But anyways, God says, my spirit shall not always strive, man. I'm not going to continue to, to, to be burdened with this. For, for, for he is also flesh, and his day shall be 120 20 years. There's going to be just 120 more years to go. Genesis 6, verse uh, <coughs> 3. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, 3. I'm oh, sorry. Verse 9. We did that. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and what? Japheth. And then it goes, and the earth was, all, was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, it corrupted his, his way upon the earth. So anyway, so Noah walks with God. He has three kids, all right? And, and notice that if you get down to verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 6, and Noah went in, and his son, this is not going to go into the ark, and his son's wives uh, with him into the ark because of the waters, I'm sorry, verse, sorry, verse 6, sorry. And, and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was, what? Upon the earth. So he has the kids at 500 years of age, right? He goes in the ark at 600 years of age, right, with his boys. But God says, I'm done with man 120 years before the flood, right? So 20 years before the kids are born, okay, uh, God says, I'm done, with, I'm done with man, right, okay? Uh, and uh, well, I'm trying to give you as an indication of how long it took to build the ark. It was 120 years. Because it wasn't 120 years. Right? Noah was a preacher of righteous for 120 years. Right? God was done, but, but he didn't have the kids until 20, or, or uh, till 500 years of age. Notice what it says here in verse, chapter 6, verse 18. God makes a covenant with Noah, okay, okay, and Noah, after his children are born, all right? So, and so, so up in verse um, 7, 17, Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, where is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee, but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou, and what? Thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons wise with thee, and everything of all flesh, right? So he tell, the covenant's made with Noah, after he has his kids, right? With me? Also, his kids have what? Wives. Well, they didn't get wives at age zero, okay? So let's take them at least 20 years of age, right? Okay, something I got. I mean, maybe I maybe got married earlier, but they would have had to have been you know, sort of adult children, right? So that takes you, so 
that takes you to at least 20 years after um, the boys are born, right? So that takes you to about 80 years at max, right? Uh, and it's probably, his boys had to find wives. The world was pretty corrupt. Now, God could have brought them to him, right? He brought all the animals to him, right, that he wanted, right? Uh, but uh, so 60 to 80 years is probably how long it took to build the ark, right? Or less, right? So because it's, it's, it's less time than that, right? Back to Genesis 6. By the way, Noah was a special person, right? Yeah, we're going to, and, and uh, he, uh, uh, he's, a, he's in the hall of faith, a preacher of righteousness, um, and if you think about it, there were giants in the land, in, in the world, right? And they weren't all separated. They were all together. They were all in a region, right? I mean, you had, they had not spread out the much. Uh, that was part of the problem. Uh, but you still have, you know, Cain's out there on the east side of, and his family. And so they're growing, they're influencing one another, uh, but they're not spread out over the whole earth. That happens, and if they did, they're all dead anyways, right? So... Before, after the floods where we, we can find the generations of things that have happened since then. Okay, now, something interesting here I, I thought was that uh, I want to point out to you. So, first, let's look at verse 5. Uh, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who, have, who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and and then he goes on, and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the earth for repent of me that I have made them. Not only is God grieved in his heart that he made man, he's also grieved in his heart that he made the beasts and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. All right? For repent of me that I've made them. Keep on, let's keep on going. For, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, right? These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also was corrupt before God. So we're basically step back, re -look, you know, take a look at what's going on with Noah here. The earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And he goes on to say something. But, but all flesh, not, and that all flesh is all, the Greek, or the Greek word, the Hebrew word there is living things. Okay? All living things are corrupt. Right? Uh, I'm not going to, this is, this one is, I'm not, I have one foot, one leg to stand on. I don't even have that to stand on in this one, right? There, are, there's something else going on beyond this, because, if how are the beasts and 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 uh, and the creeping things? Um, how are they corrupt? How are they um, vile and and evil uh, in a, in a way? It says there in verse, <coughs> excuse me, twelve. And God looked upon the, upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted His way upon the earth. So, what is God's way? upon the earth what was God what is God's way All right um, I've sort of skipped past the part I'm going to talk about Noah but you know what what is God's way on this what's his way you know we say that a lot okay you know um, if we do it God's way it's best right so what is God's way uh, there, I mean there's a, there's a number of passages we can look at about it uh, right. Well, what is what? What have they corrupted? Go, go to Romans one. Now, this is after the flood. This is the Tower of Babel, but I think it's part of it's a part of what happened before the flood as well. Because if you take a look, it was it was it's it's man, it's beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. Right. Look what Romans one verse twenty one says. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to what? Corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. You have the same things. By the way, it doesn't say fish. It doesn't say things in the water. And there have been things in the past. But I mean, there, there are some gods, quote, false gods, that are that are they're fish-like gods uh, that the the, the um, 
some of the barbarians and, and, and other other uh, cultures have had. I think even the Egyptians probably had a fish god. They had a god of everything, right? They, they were uh, whatever. But anyways, it, it's interesting that it has been. That they changed the glory of the uncorruptible god. Now, what is they were making those things gods, right? But it's interesting. There's the same types of creatures sitting right here, right? And it goes on to say that that they they knew up in verse twenty or twenty says they. Um, uh, God, oh, verse 21, 19 talks about they, they, God has showed himself to them and they knew God and says, and they are, you know, in verse 21, 20 says, for the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. That, that they see his power, his authority, or his, his, his ability, okay, and all that he can do, but they also see his authority, that's his Godhead. And, they, and basically you find out in Romans here, which goes back to the, the, after the flood, what was going after the flood, is that they reject, man rejects that authority and rejects that power. And, uh, and part of it. But it's, it's interesting that it's something like that. Well, let's, let's, let's look at a couple verses. Let's go back to Genesis 1, though, and see what God's way is back in Genesis. And then we'll see what it means. And we're not going to have enough time for it. So all of us. So maybe I should just talk about Noah, but... Uh, but I got on to this, so we'll do it. Genesis 1, um, verse 20. So let's talk, uh, 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 we're going to leave the people, the, the corrupted mankind, because we we I think we get it that they were corrupt. They were evil, they were sinful, they had walked away from God, right? They were, you know, Noah, Noah was perfect in his days, and we're going to talk about what that means. Uh, he was just and perfect in, in, in his days. Um, that means something, and the rest were not, all right? There was nobody else following God. Nobody else was uh, living any way that would be, you know, walking with God. Nobody was uh, righteous or, or pure. Nobody was separated from the things of the world. By the way, that's, what, that, that's the risk of all believers, right? Not being separated from the things of the world. It'll drag us in, and it's really difficult uh, as each day passes, and social media is that that sort of thing that just sucks us into the world all the time. And you got you to gotta step back every now and then, do like Mar Marissa and just delete her account every other week. You know, so that's what you got to do, right? You say, <laughs> just, just delete your social media and you will be happier. You know, as, as, you know, I mean, it, there's, there's, there is so much research that shows that the more time you spend on social media, the less happy you are. All right, it is, it is, it is directly, you know, the amount of time, the amount, you know, here, unhappiness, time on social media. It goes like that, right? Okay, it's just, it's just you, you, can't, you can't be happy with it. Uh, but anyways, because um, it's, it's, it's a false socialization. It, uh, anyways, and you just get this, it's a churning of ideas that, that really don't go anywhere. All right, and so it's the same thing being repeated by 100,000 people, and so you get the feeling it's like massive. All right, and it's just, it's not, all right? Yeah, well, it's all about, just so you know, it's all about control, okay? It's all about, it's all about getting anybody to do, well, one is to buy this stuff, that's, that's, you know, get these things, and the other is to control how you see the world or see things, right? It's, you know, who, who's behind it? There you go, okay? So it's like, you know, thank God, okay? This is, you know, God says, think of these things, just things, honest things, pure things, tr you, know, tr you know, lovely things, good things. Things are a good report. Wow. I, I found a, I have an app on my phone that divides the news up. And it was weird. I caught myself, and it had, it had, a, it had a section for good news. <laughs> and I started looking at it and going, this is boring. <laughs> this isn't news. I was thinking, you know, because we've been, we've been faked into thinking that's, you know, I mean, it, I looked at, I really, I was looking at it and going, this is weird. How, I mean, and I realized I had a heading, good news. I could look at garbage news, too, if I wanted, you know, so I could click on that link, but it said good news. It's like, it was like weird. Anyways, <laughs> Genesis 1, verse 20. What is God's way? Okay, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to think about the beasts, the beasts of field, the creeping things, the fowls of the air, right? So let's take a look what God's way is for them. Genesis 1.20, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly uh, above the earth in the open firmament of the earth, of the heaven. And God created great wells, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after, what? Their kind, and every winged fowl after 
his kind, and God saw that that was good. It was good, right? And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. Eating morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Do you hear me emphasizing a word? After his kind, after, after their kind. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, the cattle of their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Hey, let's, uh, let's think about something. So, what about dinosaurs? What about dinosaurs? So, you know, everybody, I mean, they seem to be freaks of nature, don't they? What are, you know, giants, what are they? Freaks of nature. You know, you know Satan might have been doing other genetic behavior. Because I'm going to show you something. Because... So, but here's, here's, here's pictures, supposedly, of the art, okay? I found the ones that were closest that I could find to what's actually described in Scripture, all right? It's a big box. They all want to put this, uh, every one of them seems to want to put this sort of ventilation system up here in the top, okay, because it talks about there's a cubit above. But, like, if you look at the account, there's one window, right? There's just one window. They make this, they want to make this like a window. Could have been one giant window. Ma- <laughs> Actually, if you read, no, it can't because Noah actually opened it up. Noah, Noah, Noah opened it up. So he opened it up and let a bird out, right? All right, and he closed it. So you can't close that. This is man thinking about, here's how you have to do it, ventilation system or something. But basically it's a big box. And the other thing is, like, if you go down, down in the, have anybody ever been to the, the ARC thingy exhibit or whatever? Down in the tent, was it tent, Kentucky? Kentucky. Um, it's not accurate for a couple different reasons. One, it's not shaped right. But the other thing is when you go inside it, they have like caged things, caged areas to keep the animals from each other. But they didn't have to do that. Now, I'm sure they had pens, right? But they didn't have to have, because, because one, what were the animals like before the flood? Were they, were, did they eat other animals? Did they eat mankind? Were they afraid of people? No, they, they were not. They were, you know, God, God, you know, when you, when you, when you, let's take a look at what it says in Genesis 1, verse 20, well, you see the making of mankind, man, it's 26, 27, 28, but look at verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, it's talking to man, subdue it, have dominion over the, no, and you have, basically, Adam and Eve, ha, and here's God's way, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that, what, what? Move upon the earth. And God said, no, no, what says there? And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree, and which is the fruit of the tree yielding fruit seed. To you it shall be for what? Meat, okay? Food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the uh, earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for what? Meat. And it was so. God saw that everything when I made it made, and behold, it was good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. They, didn't, they were not, you know, here's lions, tigers, and bears, and sheep hanging out. They don't, there's no, you don't have to protect them and put them in cages, right? So there's actually even more space in the ark, okay, than what you would see in these types of things because they didn't have to have separation. They didn't have to have cages, so to speak, all right? They had areas. They had, Noah made three floors. God told him to do three floors when we look at the ark, okay? The other thing is, so God's way was that every, all the animals lived at peace with one another, right? Go to the book of Job. I'm going to show you a creature that is not following God's way. So Job chapter 40 and Job chapter 41, and I know we're approaching the end of our time. And I want to talk about the rest of his way uh, next time. All right, but Job 40... Uh, where do I want to go here? I don't even know where I want to go. I'll find it. Uh, down in verse 15. So here is a large dinosaur-like creature called a behemoth. And this creature obeys God's way. Right? Job, or Job 40, verse 15. Behold now, behemoth, which I made, what? With thee. You know what? He makes a clarification. The behemoth is a, is a creature... That I made with you. What's that mean? Day six. 
Day six, right? Okay. He eateth grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is his loins, and his force of the navel his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. He ain't an elephant, all right? Because, you know, uh, uh, I mean, to me, I, I look at this, and I think about, like, you know, the Flintstones, you know, the, the Brontosaurus or whatever, long necks, they call them, or something like that, right? Okay. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the what? Of the ways of God, he hath made him. He, he that hath made him can make his swords approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees and the covert and the reeds and the fens. Uh, the shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh of a river and hateth us not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan in his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes; his nose pierceth through snares. You know, it's just sort of a, a lumbering, gentle giant. Okay eats grass, okay? You know, it, it, it does what God says. By the way, the book of Job, by the way, he tells Job, consider behemoth. He's seen him. He knows him. When did Job live? Probably. Most likely before the flood, all right? Because he's pre-law. You don't see anything about the law. So, uh, or maybe, but anyways, let's go to Job 41. Now we look at another giant. What? Yeah, you don't know anything about. Yeah, there's. You know, it has to be for the covenants and things like that. So, it's, so it's 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 should be before the flood, right? I mean, that seems to be where it's at. Verse four, chapter forty-one, verse one. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook? So we have another beast, okay? Or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he, will he make many supplications of thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for us? what? What was Adam and Eve told to do? They were supposed to subdue the earth and all the beings. They were supposed to be in dominion over all of them. And here is a beast that you can't make a covenant with. You can't, you can't be in control. He can't be a servant. Will thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shout the, shout, that's by the way, it was all those things back in the, in the, during the feudal times where they had dragons flying around. That's, you know, the, the maidens being captured, I guess. I don't know. Like they take it from scripture, I guess. Um, Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish beers? So, I think this is interesting. Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do more. You know what that means? You touch him, you're dead. All right? Because you're not going to do anything more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Uh, anyways, you can read all these things about him. He has scales. He's, he's, uh, he's got kneesings. He's, he's almost like breathing fire almost, right? He's, he's hot. He, he, by the way, he's hot-blooded. By the way, what's the most recent thought about dinosaurs? They, they probably weren't cold-blooded. Just so you know that. Okay. Anyways, verse 34. By the way, Leviathan is also a picture, a type of Satan, right? And I think it's directly linked. He says, verse 33 says, Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He holdeth high things. He is the king over what? All the children out of pride. See, basically there's a spiritual picture here as well. But Leviathan is a beast that doesn't follow God's way. Well, how did that happen? I'm just asking a question. I think, I think there was, you know, again, I, I can't hang my hat on this much, but... Uh, I, I think it, you know, I think we're talking about that Satan was also genetically flawing everything. There were all, all other types of stuff, you know, they were making, you know, trying to destroy man, right? Okay, destroy, destroy it also. If, you know, animal, animals are not afraid of man, well, here's an animal that will kill men, right? Right, and, and, and kill anything around it. It's not his way. Why is it that God looks at the, his creation, all of it, except for that which is living in the ocean, and, and basically says, it is corrupt, it is violent, it is, it is it, I, am, I am grieved that I created it. Because when he did create it, it was good. Okay, it was, it was very good, right? Uh, I think, you know, you have a lot of stuff going on here that's, that's deeper, that, that bigger than where we're at. Go back to Genesis last, last verse. Go back and just read verse 6 and 7 again, Genesis 6. And it repented. God, God was, you know, was, you know, he changed his mind, okay, about man on the earth. Now, he didn't change it completely because he's still, you know, he's preserved man. 
and he preserved his, you know, his creatures. By the way, did Noah go out and gather up the, the animals? Well, you know why he didn't do that? Because God was looking at, he wanted, he wanted what he wanted. He didn't want everything. He wanted what he wanted, right? He, he wanted the pure, the pure line. And maybe, you know, Behemoth ended up on the ark, but I don't think Leviathan ended up on the ark. People say, well, what about Tyrannosaurus Rex? Well, that's sort of what Leviathan looks like, right? And th that type of creature. Uh, anyways, and he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and agreed them in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created upon the, from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for he repented me that I have made them. By the way, he said, I'm going to destroy them, destroy them all, but he does, he's not all, because he's still preserving, right? He's just getting rid of that which is corrupt. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, we'll, we'll pick that up next time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for your word. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your great love and grace. We thank you, Lord, for everything you are. Help us, Lord, to uh, uh, just understand these things. Let your word speak to us, Lord. Uh, uh, continue, Lord, to work your will and way in our lives. And, Lord, help us to do things your way. And we thank you for these things, Lord God, in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.